What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crappers Live. I'm David Wilson, and I just had some kind of weird glitch in my Emacs automation for OBS, but we're here now. So uh, thank you all for joining today. Uh, this is the weekly Friday stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever topic I've come out with for the day, and uh, this, this week is no exception. Um, sorry for the delay. I uh, wasn't able to sync my show notes from my Git repository because a GPG agent decided it wanted to die and I had to uh, restart some stuff. Uh, yes, uh, Cruxo2 says, it is Friday the 13th. That's true, it is Friday the 13th. So of course we're gonna have problems uh, because of that. Let me uh, just tweak a couple settings here on my side. All right, uh, hello to Osloy, Valentino, uh, 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 Parnikapore. I'm sorry if I butcher your name. Uh, Rostislav, JK, Crux, uh, Benoit, the Foss Enjoyer. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Just make sure everything's good. Hello, uh, Andre. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, let's see. What's, what's the updates for this week? So um, just want to let you know about some big changes coming to Crafted Emacs soon. Uh, Jeff Bowman and I have been talking uh, a little bit over the past couple weeks about um, some things we'd like to see improved in the project, basically you know, making it more of a toolkit for building a, uh, an Emacs configuration rather than just like a straight out of the box config. So uh, check out Jeff's blog post here. Uh, it's probably easier just to go to his blog, jeffbowman.writeas.com. Uh, the link is in the show notes, the link is below. Um, and uh, that his blog post explains a bit more about what we have in mind. Uh, it's not in the repo just yet. The changes are not in the repo just yet, but probably within the next you know month or so, maybe maybe less, we'll have some uh, some change on that. And I'll definitely let you know on the channel here uh, whenever uh, those changes occur. But um, I think it's going to be a nice improvement to the way that Crafted Emacs works because. Um, I would rather it just be a bunch of modules you can just pull into your existing configuration so that you are writing your own init.el. You're not loading our init.el. Uh, that way it's more of your own configuration that you're just pulling in some some extra goodies uh, with. So should be pretty uh, uh, interesting to, uh, to see those changes soon. And that also dovetails into some other things I've been working on as well, which I'll mention in a second. Uh, hello to uh, TE, Sloth2, uh, Mark and Punked, uh, Erewhon, uh, Dave Thompson. Thanks so much for being here, folks. Appreciate it. Debian for life, SlothTube says. Well, you know, if, if I wasn't using Geeks, I'd probably use Debian. Debian's nice. It's good stuff. Um, so uh, another thing I wanted to mention is that I actually submitted a uh, home Emacs service for Geeks Home uh, to the patch alias. Uh, was it yesterday? Maybe it was yesterday. But um, it's sort of based on what we were doing last week i mean i was showing how i was making a home service for emacs configuration last week uh but i was sort of encouraged by uh, ludovic cortez to uh, submit a home service and there's already a couple other submissions on the geeks patches uh mailing list so i i adapted one of them and added some stuff to it that i thought would be useful which would be useful with the new crafted emacs uh, changes actually but that's something that will come later but uh i'm really excited if if it does get merged, it hasn't really moved yet as far as like the review process is concerned, but uh, it does give us a, a pathway to having a good way to assemble your Emacs configuration using Geeks Home. You're not gonna write your entire configuration in Scheme. You're gonna write it in Emacs list, but just sort of assemble the pieces using Scheme in your Emacs Home, or sorry, in your Geeks Home configuration. So um, I think it's a good strategy. I'm definitely interested to hear people's feedback. Uh, Benoit says that he'll be trying it at night. Yeah, definitely let me know what you think about it. I'd also be interested in, uh, in Dave, Thompson, Dave Thompson's ideas on uh, what it looks like. Um, so uh, Osley says, what is Emacs Home Service? So uh, Geeks Home is the user level uh, configuration system for Geeks. And a home service is basically a component that brings in various different things like a set of packages to install, configuration files to put into your home directory, uh, maybe shepherd services to run in the background, things like that. So the Emacs home service is basically a component for a Geeks home configuration that can create your init.el uh, and early init.el files for you, but by pulling things in from various different places. So uh, it's, um, I think it's, uh, I think it's going to work. We'll see. We'll see whether the, the maintainers decide they want to merge it. 
Uh, someone says, long live Arch. Yeah, I mean, Arch is fine. All right, so uh, also I want to mention again uh, to join us on the Fediverse. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun on uh, emacs.ch and fossa.org recently. I mean, basically any um, Fediverse server or instance that you want to join, you can get in touch with people who are interested in Emacs and Geeks. So definitely uh, check that out if you haven't yet. Uh, emacs.ch or fossa.org are both good choices for uh Activity Pub or Fediverse instances if you want to join there. And also give me a follow if you are on there. Lots of people are on there already. A lot of people that you know from the Emacs community. So definitely nice to uh, uh, have more of us all there together. Uh, someone asked why their name can't display on the screen. Probably because the, uh, the thing that I'm using for that isn't going to display uh, what I'm guessing are uh, uh, Mandarin or Chinese letters. GK Sudo says, I've noticed a lot of Emacs packages being added to the Gen 2 repo too. That's nice. Okay. So uh, lastly, I'll just mention, as always, um, if you want a cool way to support the channel, you can pick up a copy of the book Mastering Emacs by Mickey Peterson. Uh, this is a book that goes really in depth on uh, the usage of Emacs and configuring Emacs. If you want to go sort of further than what we've seen on this channel so far, I definitely recommend uh, checking out that book. Um, and also just check out the masteringemacs.org website because there's a ton of really good uh, blog posts there. But uh, the book is really good. If you use this link, uh, masteringemacs.org slash r slash systemcrafters, a portion of the, uh, the sale or the purchase will go to supporting the channel, which is really great. I really appreciate uh, Mickey for setting that up uh, to help us out here. Um, a lot of people have also taken advantage of that. So it's really awesome that you've all uh, sort of, you know, picked that up to support the channel and also to check out a really good book about Emacs. Uh, there's other ways to support the channel as well. If you uh, like the content that I make here, just check out systemcrappers.net slash support the channel and uh, all the details are there. Uh, JK says, uh, could you give advice on which one I should learn first, scheme or common lisp? Uh, thanks, keep, keep the good work. Thank you. Um, my opinion is scheme, but that's just because I'm biased towards scheme. I'm not as much of a common lisp fan. Uh, we, we won't go into the differences about, you know, common list versus scheme, but uh, I would say learn scheme. And if you learn Guile scheme, then you can uh, configure your system with GNU Geeks, which is great. All right. So today, what we're going to do is try to experiment with um, how one might build a custom Geeks distribution that comes pre-configured with a specific desktop environment and software configuration. In other words, uh, something that's heavily Emacs driven like what you see here. And to do that, we're going to build a VM image where one can boot directly into the default environment provided by the distribution just to see, you know, try it out, see if you like it, and then later install it on your own machine. However, the installation part, not so easy. That's not something we're going to try to tackle today. What we're actually going to do is just um, try to put together a VM image that we can boot into and just, you know, cruise around and see uh, how well it works. So... Um, the purpose for this is that I, I'm doing a little bit of groundwork for some ideas that I have in mind. I mean, one of them is sort of this crafted geeks idea that I've been talking about every once in a while. Uh, but to make a customized geeks dist distribution, there has to be some reason for it. Like you have to have you know some value to have some other distribution. So uh, let's talk about what goals we might actually have for something that is a customized geeks distribution. Well, first of all, including the full uh, Linux kernel, including uh, proprietary blobs. Now, the reason why I would do this is just because, you know, many people are using laptops, myself included, and the Linux Libre kernel that comes with Geeks by default, um, just, well, it will boot in many cases, but sometimes your graphics drivers don't work and many times your Wi-Fi won't work. So I'd rather just, uh, uh, skip straight to having the full Linux kernel pulled in by default. Uh, what else? Uh, maybe um, having an EXWM based uh, desktop environment. Sure, that's fine. And that's not too hard because there already is uh, a selection in Geeks for setting up EXWM. I'm not exactly crazy about how they do it, but uh, I probably should experiment with it a little bit just to um, see if I can make it work better for my cases. What else? Maybe um, improving the look of the uh, the boot process. So, or let's say boot up process. So in Geeks, if you've used it before, you've noticed that 
Um, you have the normal Grub boot screen that has the Geeks logo. It looks kind of nice. Uh, the text is a little bit small on higher DPI screens like mine. And uh, also, you just get dropped into a text console while it's while it's booting. There's no like splash screen that is there while it's doing the whole boot up process in the background. I don't really know what is necessary for that, but I would like to uh, do something with with that if I can. So splash screen on boot, uh, improved grub uh, theme, I guess. Uh, better console font. I don't know. What else? Um, certain services pre-configured, like uh, let's say maybe Bluetooth or um, uh, thermal D, you know, power for laptops. Maybe certain things like, I don't know. We'll just look at my own configuration and see if there's anything we can sort of pluck out of there and, uh, and take. But um, the default, well, there really is no default, I guess, for a Geeks configuration. You just put whatever in there that you want, which is great. But if you want to have a more like out of the box, ready to go type of configuration, you kind of need some extra things to add to that. So I would probably try to add some of these things into a default configuration. Um, let's see, uh, develop it in a way where it's easy to pull in the pre-configured bits but uh, you can also discard them. So sort of like how I have in mind with uh, Crafted Emacs, what I would like is for something like a Crafted Geeks would be something where you own your configuration file, but the things you pull in are sort of like helpful utilities to set things up faster. And then as you get more familiar with Geeks, you can just get rid of some of that stuff if you didn't want it anymore. If you sort of wanted to change things up and do things yourself, uh, that would all be possible. So. Uh, Gun says, yeah, the System Crafters logo as the boot splash screen. Yeah, I would love that. If I can get that working, that'd be really cool. Uh, Rostislav says, the boot process doesn't remember your input when you restart it. Interesting. Uh, Benoit says, goals, share our Geeks Home services. I've already got something to share. Yeah, we should definitely uh, start doing that. Uh, let's see. GK Sudo says, or skip Lisp and Scheme and learn Mesh. Well, yeah, Mesh. I, I put Mesh on hiatus a little bit because I want to spend more time uh, dealing with, uh, or learning Guile or getting better with Guile. I think Guile's got a lot of potential. There's a lot of activity in the Geeks community and in the Guile community. And I feel like my time is probably better spent, um, contributing to that ecosystem at the moment. However, Mesh is not going to go away because I still, like, I can't resist the idea of writing a compiler and continuing to work on it. So I've got some different ideas on how I might, you know, continue, uh, doing that. Benoit asked a question, uh, what would make it different to RDE? Uh, RDE is, has a very specific configuration. Like they, they're using Wayland, they're using uh, Sway, um, and it's, it seems to be more geared towards like a development environment, which may just be the naming convention and maybe it's not like that, but um, it's a very specific way that uh, the Andrew set it up, which is great. And that's sort of the idea is like, maybe there's another way we could set it up that would be uh, equally interesting to people who follow this channel. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what it, what it turns into. I don't know, like I'm, I'm really just experimenting to see what actually makes sense. I don't really know yet whether it makes sense to, to do a customized distribution, but I feel like a, an easy starting point where you have a, a nice like live CD that you can boot into that has an environment like this already set up and maybe has some kind of helpful installation interface, maybe even an Emacs or like a GTK app or something uh, could make it easier for people who have a harder time getting started with the actual normal Geeks installation process, which is difficult the first time that you do it. I had to make like an hour and a half long video to explain how to do it. So, you know, it's... Uh, not necessarily so easy. Gun says grub, grub configuration in the scheme. Well, it's sort of, we sort of do have that, I think, uh, with the bootloader configuration. I need to look at that type a little bit more. Uh, what else did I want to say on this? Uh, one thing I wanted to try, I don't know if this is possible. It may actually not be possible, but um, if we could automatically set up users, uh, Geeks Home configuration at system install time. Now, that's really just to get like the initial environment set up because once you 
install your system. Like let's say we have this live VM that I'm trying to build today. If you have this B VM, you want to boot into it. It needs to boot into a user account and have all this stuff set up already. Now, obviously we could have it set up so that every user boots into EXWM by default, but you're going to boot into just a white Emacs screen because there's no other configuration. So we have to have something in the user's home directory to uh, have that sort of pre-configured environment already set up. So to do that, we would have to either do like a post-processing step on the home folder that gets created as part of this process or somehow run Geeks Home as a part of the installation process. I don't know exactly know how that would work yet, but there might be um, there might be like a post uh, post uh, create hook or something that I can use to, to run that. So I, I'm curious to see how that's going to work out. There are some things like that. I think that I've, I've seen something like that recently, like a hook. Uh, Dave says, uh, GTK installer would be so nice. I recently ran in, uh, a GT Guile plus GTK program, so it's totally possible. Yeah, I feel like um, when I was at the Geek's birthday event, I think I remember uh, Jocelyn uh, Poiret telling me that he was potentially working on maybe like a GTK based installer or at least wanted to. So I'm not sure if that's actually something that's happening, but um, it would be nice because the graphical installer that comes with Geeks is, I don't know, it, it works. It's great. I mean, it actually gets the job done, but it doesn't look so good and it's not really a good introduction to geeks i think it would be better if there was some kind of graphical installer uh process gun says uh, select different profiles on boot that's an interesting idea <laughs> david says it's great because i certainly don't want to do it yeah it, it's not going to be easy i mean a lot of the code is already there in the graphical installer library that's in the geeks code base all the stuff for like you know reading the disk partitions you know creating partitions uh setting up wi-fi all that stuff so maybe a lot of that stuff could be repurposed for a graphical like an actual legitimate gtk installer or maybe it could be uh used in an emacs package just sort of invoking guile scheme from uh from emacs i don't know it sounds a little bit crazy but I have a lot of thoughts about what I might want to do, and I don't really know how all of them are going to fit together yet. So part of this experimentation is to figure out what's uh, what's possible. Um, someone asks, uh, how do immutable distributions record command history? Uh, important for autocomplete. So the, the system installation is immutable in that uh, any programs or configuration files that get created as part of executing a Geese configuration go into a read-only file system uh, called the GNU store, but um, the the stuff that's in your home directory is totally mutable. It's a normal file system. If you use Geeks Home to configure your home directory, directory only the files that Geeks Home creates um, are read only. The other files that get created, like Bash History, etc., which Geeks Home does not create, uh, those are still writable by you. So uh, the things that need to be mutable are mutable. Uh, yeah, only only the uh, the f the files that are like configuration files that are in the GNU store are read only. I mean, technically you could go change them if you really wanted to, but uh, the idea is that you change your configuration, your Geeks configuration, to apply those changes back to those files instead. Okay, so let's see. Let's let's just get into it. Um, so I haven't actually done a live VM before, but I know that there is one that is provided by the Geeks project. Oh, here's that blog post by Jeff uh, that I mentioned before. <laughs> Gun says, Bash is a no-go. You'll want to use SCSH. Well, I would like to try it sometime, but... Oh, let's do this. All right, so uh, geeks.gnu.org. Hey, Sol Slom Skater. All right, so let's see. Download. I know that there is a QMU image. But we'll have to find where that actually is inside of the Geeks repo. So let's just go right over to Code Geeks. Now, I know there's an install.scm, all right? So there's GNU system install.scm, but what about uh, in the same folder? Images. Uh, none of those look like what I want. WSL2, haven't tried that one yet. VM, is it this one? Or is this just like the library stuff? Okay, virtualize operating system. So this is for actually creating the system, but I don't see one yet for the uh, sort of default. 
But what about the install? I think that one isn't very... Okay, it's got a lot of stuff in it. The install image is kind of interesting to look at, mainly because it, it has all the configuration for how like the graphical installer gets set up. Let's see. Log to info, uh, documentation shepherd service for like those TTYs with the manual inside. Let's see. Et cetera, configuration files. Interesting. Some template files. This would definitely be useful for uh, trying to make an installer, an actual installer image and not just a live image. So the build daemon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's not what we're looking for. I wonder where, let's see, let's see, desktop. Oh, did I see VM image? What's, what's in this? Uh, template for virtualized environments. You can reconfigure the whole system. That might be it actually. Gun says, I don't like installers poking my dot files. They should provide snippets for sourcing. Yeah, maybe so. Let's see. Okay, this must be it. Uh, the slim service. Does it do like auto login? Cause that's something I would like to try to set up. Ooh, spice VD agent service. Nice. Didn't know that was there. Uh, remove some services, GDM. Oh yeah, of course. Interesting. They take a uh, network manager out. They says I dropped out for a bit. Are you looking for the declarative image stuff? I'm looking for the, the VM image. Um, the one that actually is official from the, the geeks, uh, download site. So it's this one here. Install and run the current geeks rather than an older snapshot geek service type. Interesting. Okay. That's cool. I haven't seen that before. That actually might be pretty useful. Login service type. Um, you might be able to start with this and see what happens. So let me just jump into a folder. Let's see. Geeks distro. I don't know. Uh, VM.SCM. Whoops. Nah, that was not smart. Delete that. Yes. All right. So VM.SCM. And then I'll paste this in. All right, so um, we can just try to build this straight out. Let me pull up VTerm because I don't really know. Eh. Okay. So um, Geeks System VM. Let me pull up the manual for that too. Geeks manual. I probably should just do this in the info screen, huh? Info. So Geeks. Geeks shell. Geeks VM. Oh, system. There we are. Right there. I go back. All right, so uh, Geek System, VM. Build the, the virtual machine that contains the operating system declared in file and return a script to run that VM. Yep. Okay, so, so uh, Geek System VM, uh, VM.SCM. I don't know how long this is gonna take because, oh, whoops. Gotta go to projects, geeks, uh, sorry, code. Geeks distro, and then run that again. Um, sometimes it takes a while to build uh, images because of all the stuff that it has to do to produce the image. So we're gonna see what happens with this. Yeah, Dave, I, I found that file and uh, manual who also asked. I found it in this uh, templates folder. So this is under uh, GNU slash system slash examples. There's a few different template files. I don't exactly know where those get used, but um, there's one for desktop also. Let's see, what does that have in it? It'd be interesting to take a look at it really quick. Wow, you can do like an initial password. That's a little bit risky, I guess. Uh, add GNOME and XFCE. Let's see, so we're adding those to desktop services. I'm guessing those, is there like an EXWM? EXWM desktop service type. Mm, no. Let's look for EXWM somewhere. Because there is a service. Can't be in this XYZ. All right, let's just look for plain EXWM. 
Because it's one of the, the choices for... What is this? Release manifest, okay. Yep. Services, EXWM, oh, okay. Interesting. So this seems to be where the list of uh, desktop environments is uh, defined. So we have GNOME, which is the GNOME desktop service type, et cetera, et cetera. Then we get down to uh, EXWM, which basically just throws some packages into the profile. Now I wonder what Emacs EXWM does whenever you install that at the system level. Another thing I'll say is I don't like installing Emacs at the system level because it locks you into the version of Emacs has been installed with a system profile. And for me, I don't update the system profile that often. I do the home profile pretty often, but the, home, the system profile, like maybe once every month or two, I don't know, maybe, maybe even less. So um, that basically locks your Emacs version to, ooh, that's even worse, isn't it? It locks your Emacs version to whatever's in your system profile. And um, the rule about Emacs packages installed by Geeks is that they have to be installed into the same profile as the Emacs package. So if you install random Emacs packages via Geeks in your home configuration or in your user level Geeks profile, then they may not load or be seen by this, this Emacs that's installed here. So I'm not sure if that's the right way to do this, but we're gonna try it anyway and see what happens. Uh, Manuel says, so it comes with Geeks. It's a file that's in the Geeks uh, code repository. But um, I'll, I'll provide the one that I'm uh, hacking on today. Actually curious about what else is in here. System services. System services to configuration. Find desktop service. Okay. Be interesting to see where that uh, system dash services is used. Okay, it's in the uh, the installer UI basically. This whole newt folder is basically a, the uh, in curses or terminal based graphical UI that is used by uh, the Geeks graphical installer. Okay. Well, that's, that's interesting. Let's take a look at that uh, vm.stm file that we copied. So we've got a message of the day, which maybe isn't super useful. Hey, Elijah. Um, auto update resolution crutch. That's kind of interesting. So where does this get added? Auto update. It's a cron job. <laughs> does it run once? Manually invoking, <laughs> manually invoking X render every second. That doesn't seem like a good thing to do. I guess it's the the hacky solution that was necessary at the time, but uh, I don't know, man. On a VM, that's fine because you're not going to have more than one screen, probably. But if you keep invoking X render with just these parameters, I don't know what it's going to do. All right, let me check out the guest uh, profile or user. Empty password, that's fine. I'm guessing that it's auto login. Auto, auto login T. Okay, so Slim is doing auto login, so that's cool. We'll have Slim that will just jump directly into the, uh, the user account because there's no password, so we can just do that. And uh, I already use Slim in my configuration, so that's fine, it's great. I haven't really messed with configuring it though. It'd be nice to have a nice System Crafters logo type thing. Looks like it's a spice thing though, so it probably would only matter on a VM. That's that's a good point. Yeah, good point. Dave says, I, I was wondering why some spice stuff wasn't working with X XFCE. Could be. Uh, QXL virtual GPU driver is added to provide a better spice experience. Cool. Yeah, all this stuff is definitely useful for a, uh, a VM. So what we'll do, once this thing finally builds, like once it builds, uh, I think 
rebuilding it is going to take less time just because we already have um, a lot of the collateral there. Once we have it built, we boot it, make sure that it works. Then we'll try to tweak the uh, initial setup and see what happens. I believe that if I get rid of the XFCE service, XFCE, where is it? Yeah, if I if I change this to just install the um, EXWM package instead, in theory, uh, it should, well, I don't know if it'll boot directly into it. We'll see, it might. I might be able to tell the slim configuration also what to do by default. Uh, let's check info. Um, info search uh, slim. Oh, there we are, slim configuration. Allow empty passwords. Cool. Um, mm, automatically unlock the user's GBG keys with the login password via. Ah, okay. Cool. Auto login and default user. We have theme configuration. Ah, auto login session. This must be the name of the executable to start as the default session. Um, okay. I could do that with Emacs. If false, a session described by one of the available .desktop files um, will be used. You must install at least one window manager. So I think that the EXWM package, in, when installed at the system level, it does produce one of those uh, .desktop files. In fact, let's go check that out. Let me jump over to a file here, Emacs XYZ, EXWM. And then... Yeah, we have this um, add after install X session. It drops a file into sh user share X sessions for EXWM. Yeah, EXWM.desktop. So that should be enough. So I think if we just go back into the VM.SCM, go to the packages list, um, append list. Let's do another list here, or is that going to be... What's it called? Uh, specification to packages. Is that right? Specification to packages. Uh, there it is. Specifications to packages. All right. Yeah. So basically like this. In fact, let's just steal that. That's much better. We'll put that here. But that needs to evaluate these. So let's make that a, wow, don't do that. Um, list, stop it, stop it. Okay. So if I take out the XFCE desktop service type, that should work. Now, um, before we run this again, what I'm gonna do is try to boot this image. And the documentation told me that uh, what gets produced here is a script, obviously, as we see here. I don't know uh, what it's gonna do though. So if I were to search again for uh, Geek's system, no. There we are, okay. Net PCI. Um, so I think if I just run this again, it should just like, yeah, oh, no, that's not what I wanna do. We'll copy this path. And then we can provide these other parameters here. Is SMP the number of processors? I probably wanna increase this to at least 2048, I would guess. Let's try it, see what happens. Okay, we got a VM booting. All right, and it seems to be booting into uh, XFCE via Slim. Let's see how long it takes. Kind of slow, but it worked. Okay, so that's that's the out of the box, more or less, um, VM template. So we were able to build a um, VM image using uh, Geek System VM with that file, and. My mouse just keeps like disappearing. There we go. 
And then we were just, we once we built the image, it produced a shell script that we can use to execute the image. So uh, that allowed us to do this. Now, if I could just power this down and quit. Stop taking my mouse. There we go. All right, so specification of packages, unbound variable. I believe that must be in another module that we don't have. Let's see, geeks. You know, geeks uh, surfy one, is it gonna be in what? Geeks uh, packages? Uh, let's see, specific, nope, nope, nope. Go to here. Specifications to packages. Should I just write like a define? Oh, right there, GNU packages. That's where it is, right there, okay. So now we'll go back into vm.sem. Uh, we're gonna put this into GNU packages. Just drop that right there. And now I should be able to rebuild this image. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Oh, specification to package. That's wrong. Okay. All right. So now it's uh, going to run the uh, system build again. And I don't know how long it's going to take. Maybe it won't take too long because we didn't change a whole lot. But who knows? Let me see if I miss anything in the chat. <laughs> Dave says this is enlightening. Yeah, it's enlightening to me too. Uh, Elijah says the script just invokes QMU with a variety of args and passes along any extra args you give it. Yes. Hey, Jeff. I mentioned your uh, blog post a little while ago. Okay. So it's computing the derivation. It's taken longer this time than it did last time. I don't know if I just uh, confused it by changing all this. I'd probably want to add some more fonts here and um, maybe some other programs I might want to use. But if we're going for like a strictly plain EXWM setup, then maybe I don't need a whole lot of extra stuff. All right, I don't know how long it's gonna be chewing on the derivation here. Let's see what else we can um, take a look at in this configuration file. So if we've got it set up so that it should, in theory, boot directly into EXWM. Uh, open SSH service type, eh, we can leave that out for now. Dave says, funny how this uh, parallels a project I've been doing to generate VM images for non-engineer uh, sprightly employees. That's cool. I, I would love to uh, hear more about that if you want to uh, tell me some things via some kind of uh, private message somewhere. Also, the DHCP client service type, sure. Um, removing a bunch of these things, I guess they're not needed for a VM. That's fine. What would be nice is if you know, some of this stuff can be factored out so that some of the services get pulled in for the VM, some of them get pulled in for like the install image, which I suppose, well, no, there's there's a difference between the live CD and a test VM. So a live CD would need to have other configuration stuff that's not like, you know, all the spice stuff. It might need drivers for uh, video card, et cetera. <clears throat> Excuse me. And also you definitely don't want to have uh, no password uh, for for root in a normal system configuration. Dan says, maybe boots to Windows ME. Uh-huh. Dave says, of course, my VM image doesn't boot to EXWM. Yeah, you wouldn't want to do that to your poor users. Okay, so that didn't take too long after it finally decided what to do with that derivation. So uh, we'll run this particular instance of the... I should be doing what it told me to do, right? Let's 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 change this. I'm not gonna be messing around anymore. Stop. Um, we're gonna hey this one. So I will run as a subshell uh, geek system vm uh, vm .scm, and then hopefully e shell is gonna do this right. If it doesn't do this right, then I'll have to use vterm, which is fine. If it does pop up, uh, then, sorry, if it does pop up VM, we'll be in good shape. I don't know what's taking so long. Oh, it's probably eating all the outputs. We can't actually see what's happening. Eh. I think it's better to uh, depend on a real shell for this so we don't lose any information. I'm not gonna run at the same time though, obviously. Hello. All right. There we go. So let's see what this thing is doing. 
I don't know how long it's gonna take. What else do we need from this? Label for the grub boot menu. There's a geeks displayed version. I wonder where that gets defined. It must be part of the um, the CI for generating that image that's on the website. I'm guessing they have like an automated build to produce that image. Okay. This should have been instant. Let me let me cancel that because that should have been instant. Uh, V-term. Okay, before I do that, that's not going to work, obviously. Oh, whoops. Uh, CD projects, uh, code, geeks, distro. All right. And then I'll turn that into a proper bash sub subshell execution. There we go. Good. Now we can actually see the output because uh, before we would just be waiting and waiting and waiting without knowing what's happening. It shouldn't have to do this. I don't know why it's um, trying to calculate a derivation again for this because it should have already cached. Unless, unless because it has to go through this whole system configuration and produce something and then it can tell that it already has built it, then it uh, finally finishes. I wanted to use a different machine for, for running all this because this one's a little bit underpowered, but I just didn't have time to set up my, uh, my faster machine before the stream today, unfortunately. Okay, while we wait on that, let's do something else. We're gonna go into info. Uh, I wanna look at a couple things. Uh, first of all, I wanna look at the grub configuration so that maybe, uh, let's see, grub, oh no, it's bootloader configuration. That didn't help me at all. I need to get a better uh, way to search info. Like I'm, I'm not an expert at using the info system inside of Emacs. So uh, sometimes I'm a little bit slow on it. What keys do we have here? Table of contents. Come on now. GT, thank you. All right, so bootloader configuration. Okay, so there's a uh, grub bootloader, grub effy bootloader. Yeah. S is a regex search. Yeah, it's obviously not looking at the right thing. Oh, here we go. The VM is booting now, finally. Let's see what happens. Does it go straight into EXWM? Maybe. Hey, I see Emacs. Mm okay and it didn't take up the whole screen but maybe that's uh, expected whoops i need to uh let it steal my input so uh what is it let's look at the messages buffer yeah whatever that is I've, i see messages like this from exwm every now and then where it's got some kind of xcb failure um, do we have EXWM, uh, workspace switch? Oh, it's not interactive. Five by five crack randomly. What is that about? Never seen that before. Uh, EXWM workspace switch. Switch. It didn't prompt me. <laughs> okay. Or is it switch create? EXWM uh, workspace switch create. Workspace index out of range. Dude, I'm using Meta X. It's interactive. Okay, whatever. That's We're wasting time on that. Uh, let's take a look at, whoops, uh, eShell. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I made it upset. eShell. All right, inside the home folder, there's an emacs.d, but that's just because emacs launched, so it wrote out its own folder there. Uh, cat, oh, ls.emacs.d, probably is just a bunch of garbage in there. Yeah, the eln cache and eshell. And the other typical things you would see in a new uh, user profile. So let's see, exwm inside of vm, inside, of, uh, inside exwm, yes. 
So I don't know why it didn't work. But it's fine. That, that we can sort of possibly work with it. Um, we sh should probably figure out a way to put a configuration in here though. Do I want to do that now or do I want to look at other things? Maybe, maybe I can look at this for a moment and see if there is an answer to the question I have about how you do some initial user account setup. Because if we can do that, we might be able to spit out an initial init.el file at least and maybe improve the situation here. Does it have xrander by default? No. Okay, probably need that. At least to uh, manage the screen size correctly. Uh, geeks install xrander. Is there a Nix Flake equivalent for Geeks? I don't exactly know what Nix Flakes are. Can you tell me what Nix Flakes are? I keep hearing people talk about them. Oh, read-only file system? You can't install Geeks packages? What is Geeks? Ge Geeks is a mm, functional package manager and system configuration tool. It, it, it's too many things. It's hard, to, it's hard to describe it in a very pithy way. All right, so... Why can't I use Geeks install? That seems kind of counterproductive. So... It does seem that a lot of things are read-only. Oh, that's read-write, right? I don't even know if this is visible. Probably I should uh, scale the screen a bit. Uh, where is it? Zoom to fit. That's not much better. All right. So what part is read only? That's not gonna work. Maybe it will. Uh, I need to use Geeks System BM Image. Thank you, Dave. All right, let's then let's let's back this out then. Uh, I'll just kill this. I don't know if this actually shuts the image down or if it's still running in the background because we're gonna have a lot of uh, heavyweight crap. Oh, you have to write your own launcher. Eh, it's not so bad. I mean, all we gotta do is um, <clears throat> whoops. Where was that? We're gonna have to wait again, aren't we? Uh, let's do this instead. We're gonna go cruise right into the GNU store folder, which is not the smartest idea in Dear Ed, but whatever. Okay, it's fine. Run.sh. Run vm.sh. Okay. Nope, that's the derivation information or G expression. What is that? Run dash VM. There we go. Run VM SH. Now we see the exec command for this. Uh, it does have some stuff baked in here, which uh, we could we could run it manually. So let's see. If I were to steal this. Let's go back into uh, project. Nope, 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 nope. Projects code geeks distro uh, run.sh. Paste that in. So I don't have like a QMU system. Oh, apparently I do. Must, I must have it in my profile. Interesting that there's Linux Libre BZ image here. A lot of extra stuff. Huh. Okay, let me look at the docs for uh, Geek System VM. VM image. Whoa, it's not in here? All right, hold on a sec. Uh, right double, right? Ah, uh, what? The root file system of the VM is mounted volatile. The persistent option can be provided to make it persistent instead. In this case, the VM disk image would be copied from the store to the temp dear directory to make it writable. Is that right? We need to use persistent instead? Okay. Um, oh, is that why? So it's basically 
using the GNU store of my system. It's not a standalone image. I wonder, well, it's, it'll just copy those folders over. So it's not like it's a huge thing. It's doing direct kernel boot. That's why the kernel and initrd are passed in. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Gun says that distro should get the name uh, Paraske V Vekatriophobia. Uh, Vekatriophobia. Okay. Vekatriophobia. Sorry, got to get my Greek pronunciation correct. All right, let's try that. Persistent. Uh, let's do this. Persistent. This may be a losing battle, but let's see what happens. Elijah says, it skips needing a bootloader altogether, makes a VM boot faster. Yeah, that definitely seems to be the case. All right, now let's get back to what we were looking at before. So um, I want to look at the bootloader config. Let me check that vm.scm file bootloader. There, there may not be. Okay, grub bootloader, fine. Do we even see it when it boots up? I can't even remember. Terminal outputs console. I'll go back and check the bootloader configuration and in info. Ah. So uh, let's see, bootloader configuration, there we go. Let's just use the mouse. Menu entries, default entry timeout, timeout uh, theme. Okay, so we have to know what the theme object actually is. Brian says Geeks is configured in Elisp. No, it's configured in Guile Scheme. All right, so terminal outputs. The output terminals used for the bootloader boot menu. So there's a few different things here. Graphics term. Ah, Grub simple configuration. So I'm guessing that this must be like, ah, yes, the default. So that's basically the uh, graphical output. Okay, so there's like other menu entries, which we don't really need. Unless we did something where um, we had like a graphical desktop environment and a console environment. Like if you had a problem with the graphical environment, maybe you could boot into Emacs in the console in a similar way. Uh, let's see, Linux arguments, multi-boot, chain loader. All right. Only Grub has theme support. Grub themes are created using the Grub theme form, which is not fully documented yet. Well, we have the source code, so. Oh. Comes with a fancy background image displaying the GNU and Geeks logos. All right, so that's a procedure. Oh, cool. You can even set that. I like that. And is this a list where it might try other resolutions first? Because I might actually want to change this on my own machine. Let's check out that grub theme. Go here, I think, and then grub theme. Ooh, look at that. You can set the image. So uh, in bootloader configuration, you can set theme. Well, let's try it. What's the best scheme? Oh, there's too many. I mean, it's really difficult to say because they all have different purposes. So I would say that for people who are watching this channel, focus on Guile Scheme because it can do a lot of things for you related to system configuration and also, you know, writing really fun scripts and applications and whatnot. But uh, there's many other scheme implementations for different purposes. Some are better than others for sure. Okay, so I want to go to this VM here and drop this right in there. So that's going to change the resolution, which might be interesting to see whether it actually does anything. Uh, this is a path to the artwork repository. Um, I could actually copy an image. I wonder what formats it supports. So uh, grub theme image formats. 
surprised that it supports SVG. Oh. Back. Uh, PNG file formatting. Why is it sticking? Uh, PNG? Come on now. PNG. The, uh, the VM build in the background is totally killing this machine. Jeez. <laughs> What is happening? Let me type PNG. Thank you. Or JPG. That's fine. So how about this? I am going to give it. Uh, I don't have those on this machine, do I? But I do have the um, background image that I'm using right now. We could try it. I don't know if it's going to work. It's too big. So if I go to uh, dot files, a hey, uh, backgrounds, I'll grab uh, this one. I believe that's the right one. Let's see. Does it load? You're taking a long time. Ah, here we go. Let's see if I can actually use Geeks install on this one. Okay, so uh, Not says, do you often eval configuration code when configura configuring Geeks? Are there pieces of code available? Yeah, you can eval code. There's a REPL for Geeks that you can use. Let's see what this does, the EXWM boot. Uh, still the same XCB request failure. I wonder why. Might need some extra config. All right, so back to, wow, don't do that. Uh, back to eShell, eShell. Geeks install X render. It might work this time. No, okay. I would have thought that that persistent flag would have done it, but apparently it doesn't. That's okay, we don't need to do that right now. It's just something I wanted to try. So I'll just kill this machine. Power it down. Uh, Manual says, isn't there a Grub2 or something? Is that that's different from Grub? Probably what we're using is Grub2. What just happened? Oh, of course. This machine is crazy slow. Okay, so once again, I'll copy this image. I'm going to go put it back over in Projects Code Geeks Distro. I'm going to rename it to uh, grubbg.jpg. And then in vm.scm, I can change this to local file. grubbg.jpg, uh, uh, right? Is that jpg? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can take a look at what that does. We may not actually... Oh, this needs to change too. This needs to be... Well, actually, leave that alone. That should be the graphical one. I'll try running it again, and we'll see how long it takes to, to build it once again. And then let's go back to info and take a look at uh, everything else here. I might need to set the color depth on this as well. I wonder if I should just do that now. Or if it you know does it by default. Graphics mode. Oh, it's a different way to set that. Um where was that? Export grub theme. It's in this file somewhere. Grub dash theme. Looks like a record type. Okay. Grub theme. Uh, resolution. Graphics mode. Why does it have two?
Okay, good to see that too. We can change the colors for normal and highlight text. That's cool. All right. So then uh, we'll go back to our VM. That's fine. Let's just run like that. See what happens. So that might actually give us a configured uh, background image for Grub, but that doesn't tell us how to get a splash screen. So uh, let's see, Arch Linux boot splash screen. It's much easier to ask that question than it is to figure out about uh, geeks. Hmm. FB splash. So is that included in uh, in Geeks? Uh, Geeks search FB splash. No. Hmm. Gen splash. Maybe this is a package that doesn't exist in Geeks. All right. So it provides a graphical environment at system startup using the Linux frame buffer layer. Okay. Something you can add as a parameter to grub, apparently. Maybe Gentoo? Wow. Interesting. Maybe Gentoo uses it also. Uh, no eye candy on the terminal is Plymouth. A more modern alternative. Okay. Flicker free animated boot splashes. Let's see. Uh, Geeks search uh, Plymouth. Hey, look at that. So why isn't anything using it? Uh, has full system D support? Well, yeah, we don't care about that. But if I can go to, um, come on now. Debian. Okay, cool. Eye candy and a more professional presentation for scenarios where the default high information text output might be undesirable. Well, that sounds like a situation that we're in. Also handles boot prompts. Oh, cool. Such as entering disk encryption passwords. This must be the thing that I'm seeing on um, Ubuntu whenever I have an encrypted drive. Check the driver that you're using for your car supports kernel mode setting. Sure. I mean, pretty much everybody has an Intel card in a laptop, but these others are supported too, it seems. So there's no themes, but that's okay because a theme can be created. You're not supposed to install this on your own. It's only useful with system integration. Well, let's see. Uh, I wonder if it's actually being used somewhere. Plymouth. E-login D support patch. Interesting. Plymouth disabled. All right, come on now. Okay. So it's not being used anywhere in uh, in Geeks, apparently. Where is the code? Well, actually, let's do this too. Uh, Geeks edit Plymouth. Okay, so on the free desktop .org, um, 
every time I switch desktops. Uh, free desktop, Plymouth repo. Okay. Falls back to text mode. It can also use a legacy dev FB interface. Cool. It needs integration with the distribution. Because it starts so early, it needs to be packed into the distribution's initial RAM disk. And the distribution needs to poke Plymouth to tell it how the boot is progressing. Okay, that is uh, trickier. However, I think that's only needed if you're, if you want um, animation, I guess. Show splash, ask for password. Yeah, it'd be cool to get this hooked up in geeks in general. All right, anyway, back to this. So uh, did that? Oh, are we still in the V term? Okay, we're waiting on the disk image to be created with our image that we uh, we're trying to use in the bootloader. I wonder if it'll actually work. Neurotransmission says, I've always wondered about kernel level system boot, uh, system D boot CLI. When a system is hung up in a looping blocking start job, it's always, let's see, does this show anything? I think it never even gets to grub. Maybe it's too far ahead in the boot process. Nah, that's okay. Elijah says, how does asking for an encrypted root password work in Geeks as it stands? Does anyone happen to know? Uh, you mean like um, whenever you have an encrypted file system, it just prompts you on the console um, like really, really early on in the boot process. Like while your, your machine's manufacturer logo is still showing, there's a prompt that shows up. And then you have to enter it again when the actual boot starts. At least in the way that I set it up, it does. So I don't know if, if I'm just doing something wrong. All right, same thing as before there with the uh, XCB error. Okay, well, we can't see. No, 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 we're not doing that. Uh, we can't see. Stop, I don't want to quit Emacs. Uh, we can't see the grub image, but I think that would work. Uh, it might require some massaging of the the image itself to put it in a format that it can actually be displayed uh, by Grub because I I imagine that image I that I am using is too big and probably has too many colors so I think I would probably have to change it anyway. Okay, so instead of that, all we can really do is work on the desktop environment. So let me think about how I might try to do that. Uh, let's go back to the manual. And what about uh, user accounts? There we are, user accounts. What else do we have here? Home directory, that's fine. Group, supplementary groups. Home directory, create a home directory, system, password. Okay, I don't see anything for like default files that get created. Ashra says, in order to get rid of the second uh, password prompt, you can use a file for another uh, Luke's key slot and add that to your init RD. That's a workaround for Tumbleweed. Interesting. Elijah says, the double prompt is necessary because the store is encrypted and Geeks keeps the kernel and init RD in the store. Oh, okay. That makes total sense then. So Grub has to decrypt it and then the kernel needs to decrypt it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Uh, Elijah says, I'm just wondering what part of the Geese's init RD is prompting for the password, the second password prompt. How could we find that? If I go here, init RD, init RD modules, base init RD modules. Well, how about that? Um, base init RD modules. So I'm not doing anything special for this prompting. That's a syntax. <laughs> okay. Default init RD modules. Okay, so it's basically an alias for default init RD modules. Whoa. 
wet. Nothing here seems obvious for that. Uh, what is it called? <sighs> Mapped devices. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Let's see. Uh, GK Suda says, I think that uh, Emacs with an initial init.el with the example EXWM config with some minor changes would be great. Yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> Emmanuel says, funny that every time you say manual for a second, I think you're calling my name. Well, maybe I am. Maybe I'm asking you to tell me the answer. I'm going to look at a manual to get the answer. Geeks build Linux init RD. So geeks. Mm. Cool. Elijah says he's done uh, custom init RD stuff in geeks before. Never poked around that like, encrypted root stuff. Yeah, I haven't looked at any any of the boot stuff in uh, in geeks. Honestly. Oh, here it is. Geeks build uh, init. Where is it? Not here. That's a different build. No. Linux module build system? Probably not. Okay. R rolling back the, uh, the the mental stack here. Let's just get back to where I was before because I tend to get lost on these nice little rabbit holes. <laughs> All right, so I want to see if I can create initial files for um, the user. Let me see if I can just track that down. There must be a place where these things get created uh, in the user account by default. So maybe there's like a service I can hook into. Uh, let's look for user account. Uh, user account. Okay, blah, 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 blah. I want the definition of user account, user account. It seems to be it, accounts, right? Uh, create home directory. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be getting done here, but let's try this. Oh, come on. Rip grip, thank you. All right, so now this is what accounts at SCM. Obviously, obviously it wasn't there. Uh, tests base activation. Here we are. Activate user home. Okay. Create and populate the home directory of users. A list of tuples unless they already exist. Copy account skeletons. From directory to home. Okay, there's a skeleton directory. Make skeletons writable. Etc. slash skel. Huh. What if I drop stuff in there? Which, uh, let's see. Ah, okay, so it's all these files then. .config, nano. Is that actually added by default? Cool. All right, so we got a bash RC pulls in the geeks environment. Is that right? What about this bash profile? No. What about X defaults? Huh. 
So, <laughs> I wonder if I could drop something in there. Put a default uh, bash RC in there, maybe. I wonder. Where is this folder coming from? Etc. slash static slash scale. Now that's a different path. It's not in the store. And I don't know exactly how that's getting assembled. Oh, that comes from the store. Okay, okay. Now I'm starting to see where this is going. Uh, there is a service somewhere where you can put files in the etc. folder. What if we take a look at that? There must be... Actually, no, no, no. Go back. Scale. Uh, these seem to be like... Oh, is there like a scale target or something? Go into the code. Scale. Okay, so maybe instead... Yeah, there it is. What's that? Shell utils. What's this? Uh, Z shell config. I don't know what this is, but um, what's it say? Pre-configured by the GRML project. Okay, so th this seems to be dropping stuff in that etc. Uh, scale folder. So potentially new user accounts get it by default. I know that there is some other kind of etc. dash service. Okay, etc. service type. Uh, file, etc. service. Service is used to create files under file, etc. and can be extended by passing it name file tuples. The question is, can I drop new things into etc. slash scale because um, that's like one build. Where is this coming from? There must be. Oh. Computed files, scaled, skeleton directory, scales, etc. Files filter out among arguments. Those things responding to corresponding to skeletons. Hey, Andrew, nice to see you. Interesting. This this is in. Uh, Shadow. Uh, the the PO files are documentation files. I think it's like uh, translated documentation files or something. File like object builds a shell list for use as etc. Shells based on shells. Uh, count activation. Skeleton directory, return to directory with. Oh, Andrew says, have a look at Geek's home service type. It allows to add home environment to system config and have it activated at boot time. Okay, thank you. That's very helpful. So um, let's check that out. Geek's home service type. See, this is why it's nice to have the person who uh, wrote Geek's home <laughs> to be on the stream to tell you what to do. Uh, home, what is it? Geeks Home Service. It's not showing up. Is it? Is it possible that I'm out of date or is it n not new?
Okay. Let's take a look at services. No. Geeks. Geeks build. Data herder. Hmm. Is that something that's in RDE or is that in Geeks? Okay, let me see, where am I in the uh, repo history? Like a week ago. Oh, hey, there's, uh, there's Dave right there at the top with the latest commit in the, uh, the sync that I have currently. Let me pull this down and see what's up there. Oh, YouTube blocked the mess <coughs> message with the link. Yeah, that, that definitely happens. Okay. Now we're, oh, well then, there's another Dave Thompson commit at the very top of the repo after I just synced. So Dave, uh, slow down, buddy. Leave some commits for the rest of us. Okay. All right, let me check out the RDE repo. So uh, git.sr.ht, gotcha, thanks. Um, A, B, C. CDW, RDE, is that right? Okay, so now let's go into uh, tree, source, uh, maybe here, maybe services, maybe home, uh-huh. Okay, that's cool. So let's take a look at this. It's a shepherd service. And user, requirement user homes, okay. One shot, auto start, make fork exec constructor, H-E. What is H-E? Oh, cutter of X on config. Say what? Okay, so this receives the config. And we're mapping over the config. Is that the fields of the config? H E oh, H E is for home environment. But where's it coming from? Oh, shepherd root service type? So I haven't looked at that one. So uh, let's take a look at uh, shepherd root service type, just for my own uh, edification. I guess a list of user env pairs, okay. Uh, let's see, simple service, okay, fine. I'm guessing it's in GNU services shepherd, right? GNU. Services, uh, Shepherd. Uh, up, 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 up. We're not open a geo file. Shepherd root service type. Okay. That was an extension. Oops. Um, yeah. It's a Shepherd root service type extension. Extensions list. Uh, profile service type, is that what it is? Profile service type. Oh, no, no, that's what the... Um... Interesting. Service Geeks Home Service Type Username. Oh, I see. 
my mistake. So that, that's the um, configuration, the actual configuration. Gotcha. Simple use example. Thank you. And the home environment is the actual home environment. Cool. So let me look at this again with that in mind. Um, so the HE is the actual path to the built home environment then because by including this, the home environment gets built and then there's the activate script. Okay, cool. So then uh, that would enable us to launch a home configuration with whatever we want, I suppose. We could have an init.el file there if we wanted to. So uh, let me see if I can give this a shot. I'm just gonna rip off this code. I have uh, Andrew's blessing because he told me to do it. So <laughs> that's what we're gonna do here. Okay. And for the VM, eh, I'll just drop this inside that uh, VM. It's horrible, but whatever. We're going to do it. What imports do I need? I probably need a, wow, a few of these. Stop. I'm to clean this stuff up. All right, so I could do a separate use module since this is not really a module file. Use modules, blah. Line them up. Now I'll delete them. There we go. Cool. Hey, Alejandro. Okay, so now we've got uh, this stuff pulled in. And delete that part. Okay. Now let's just put them together. So that everything is sort of um, co-located. Okay. Now, Geek's home service type. Um, cool. So we need a home configuration. So I can do uh, this right here. Define um, user home config. Home configuration. This would be a nice place to actually do... The, the Emacs installation and not use uh, EXWM as a system level service because we could create an X session file to launch EXWM instead, which I might do instead because I don't like that whole system service thing. So we have a user home config, probably want to have services. Fade says, is there a Geeks REPL? Yes, there's a Geeks REPL, but uh, it's, it doesn't really help too much in this specific case because um, we're just trying to put together config to run it. But uh, yeah, we actually spent a lot of time in the Geeks REPL last week. Okay, so user home config. Now, I need to add a simple service with files. What if I do this, uh, init.el. Let's try. Is there anything else I can do? Let's set the theme. How about that? So load theme. Um, what themes? Uh, modus vivendi. Okay. No confirm. Okay. Sure. Why not modus vivendi? And then mm, what else would I want to do here? Set the font, I guess. I could do that. But all right, let's just do this first, just to see if it actually works. Um, I'd better check this before, okay, there we go. Now look how <laughs> nice the uh, everything looks at this point. Uh, let me fix that. Oh, actually, well. Nah, let's do Doom Pale Knight. Oh, now I've ruined it. Fantastic. Yeah, well, let's do Pale Knight. Um, and then we also need to put packages. This is not the right way to do this, but we're just going to do it um, like this for now. So 
specifications to packages. Whoops, there needs to be an arrow. And I want to get a list of package names in here. It's a legit function, right? Um, Emacs Doom Themes. Okay. Services, uh, simple service, uh, put me some files, brah. And uh, how does simple service work? I forgot. Um, simple service, lib rat bag. <laughs> what is that? Okay. Let's get serious. Yeah. Oh, right, the service type. Okay, so I want the home um, file service or even the XDG file service. Let me just um, go to my dot .files and rip off some stuff here. Uh, Common? Yes. No. I want to go to the 2D desktop services. Okay, desktop. So uh, file service, file service. Okay, there we go. And that is uh, home file service type. Okay. Go back to VM. That's going to be um, home files service type. And then we're going to give it a Lambda, I believe. Home desktop file service. Uh, it could just be a list. All right, that's good enough. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to drop that in. This is going to be um, config slash emacs, or maybe it needs to be dot config. Init.el. Get rid of this uh, lambda here. Don't need recursive, but we do need um, init.el. So um, Elijah says, I wonder if the system activation logic for creating a new user's home tier could be massaged to activate a home environment. It would be nice. I don't know if it's, um... well, yeah, the activation script, that's kind of the thing. Like if you could do it at that time, it, it would be nice. I don't know if doing it on boot is necessarily the right thing, but yeah, uh, or login. Anyway. All right, so we have a simple service, uh, home file service type, maybe on this one? Yeah, maybe so. So, geeks home service type. Uh, okay, got that. And then we have uh, geeks home shepherd service. So the sample config that Andrew gave me is, let's go here to the service list. Services list, okay. Service, um, geeks home service type. And I'm gonna give it, uh, yeah, just that list of, what's that? Username. Right. Or should I hard code that? I think so. Yeah. So um, let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, user homes. User, user. I would guess that is string to, string to symbol. Okay. Okay. So it needs to be a string. Cool. So this is going to be guest because that's the name of the user that's on the VM. And we also want to have uh, the, uh, what is it? User home config. Is that what I called it? User home config. All right, cool. It's right over here. User home home config. Uh, let's see if that works. That was a lot of things we did there. I imagine I'm going to have some kind of complaint. Okay, did you forget a use modules form? Probably. Home configuration, yeah, of course. Okay, so 
down right. Uh, where's the other use modules? There it is. Okay, so you knew. Um, is it Geeks Home? Or is it GNU Home Services? GNU Home Services, yes, okay. Could be wrong about that. Uh, home configuration, well, well, well. I need to go to an actual system. GNU Home. Probably that. And probably services too, I would guess. Let's put that there too, services. Ah. What's your problem? Oh, home environment. That explains it. All right, so um, packages unbound variable. What did I do wrong there? Interesting. Uh, 48. Don't know why you don't like that. Packages. Oh, this needs to be a list. That's my mistake. Uh, specifications of packages. Oh, come on. I'm not using that anywhere. Oh, specifications to, yeah. I think I'm doing this pattern in a, a number of places, so who knows. Uh, VM. Well, I guess actually the best way to do this here is just to be very explicit and uh, delete that and delete that and delete that. Still doesn't like packages. Missed most of it so far. You'll have that on your repo. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put it in the show notes maybe. Home environment. It's treating it like a variable, which makes no sense. It's not the record though, is it? It's like a macro or a syntax. Maybe it's done by default. Okay. Must be doing something really stupid here. Well, let's try a couple things. Okay, so is it not what I thought it was? What's I took that out. Did I not? No. Services unbound variable. It's not treating home environment as a syntax. It's treating it as a form. Which doesn't make sense. Um, where was I just now? GNU home. I've got that pulled in into this VM, right? Oh, is it because I did it there and not here? Stupidity. Execution order matters. 
All right, it seems to be building something. I don't know if it's actually gonna work, but um, the way we'll be able to tell whether it actually worked or not is we boot the system. Well, I suppose we'll be able to tell if it boots and the theme changes, but otherwise we can just look at the .config slash emacs slash init.el file and see if it um, actually has the contents that we were supposed to put, uh, place there. All right, so um, that'd be pretty, excuse me, pretty nice if it does work. So that means that we have a way to um, fully configure the user account with a home environment, at least a starter home environment. And then after, like if the user installed this on their system, they would have, you know, the ability to use their own. But at least for this, uh, this VM, it would be nice. Rostislav says, consider using a smaller font so we can see more than just 14 lines of code. Uh, yeah, well, I, I usually keep it pretty big so that you can read it, but um, maybe it needs to be smaller. And also, hiding the terminal will help. Emmanuel says, what's a derivation? I'm not an expert on the term, but a derivation is basically like um, the inputs and outputs for building a specific thing. So um, you have to calculate the derivations of a whole profile effectively a system profile or a user profile and then build it all but like i said i'm not an expert okay i see the geeks home guest service here that's cool maybe it'll work has to take a sign building the partition now i want to see what this commits about add a note with potential performance improvement Eglot events buffer size. Hmm. Hello. There we go. So we didn't get to see the um, the boot screen because it boots too far past grub. We can't actually set up the. Um, splash screen on boot yet because we need to actually package this Plymouth app and figure out a way to hook it into the boot process, which might be quite involved, but I'm curious to try it and see if it works. And now we're trying to get the user configuration set up so that there is at least like a the beginnings of a desktop environment whenever you log in to the VM image for the first time. So it does seem to be working at least on that front. If this works, then what I'll do is switch to using an, um, an accession file and not put Emacs and EXWM inside of the system, system profile because I don't want them there. Elijah says, uh, a derivation is a list of other folders to be used as inputs to a build, a list of other dependency derivations that produce some of the input folders, a list of output folders, and a build script. There may be a more, few more things than that. Yes, awesome. Hurry up. Why is it not working? Oh, because it's VTerm and it doesn't like me. Um, maybe I should try some stuff. So I said I wanted to set up EXWM a bit better. What would I use? I mean, I. Uh, Let's see, having some other packages would be useful. Maybe I can flip this a little bit. So uh, map specification to package uh, list. So let's just um, convolute this expression a little bit. Andrew says, uh, RDE ISO is based on this service, so it should work. I already faced most of the issues and fixed them in Geeks repo. By the way, take a look at it in your spare time. It seems sound and similar with what you do. The the RDE ISO, I would like to take a look at that. See you again. All right, so. I want to add some other packages here whenever it decides to let me type. Let me type. What's happening? No. 
know what's happening. Leave me alone. Yes, what the hell is happening? Okay, anyway, F-E-H. <laughs> yes, Emacs is tragically single-threaded. It's, it's a nightmare sometimes. This is why using EXWM is not the best idea. It's the best we've got, sort of. I know that you're going to say Stump WM is the best we've got, but I don't know that I agree necessarily. All right, so um, I guess Compton, or what, what? what's the new thing these days that all the cool kids are using that's not Compton? Uh, PyCom? Huh. If I were to put like a, a nice background uh, like I do here, so we would need Feth, we need PyCom. Uh, what else do I put in my... Damn, this thing is slow. Come on, man. I just want to browse to a file. There we go. Jeez. Let's see what happens. And once we see this, then we'll go back to what I was doing before. Don't have a whole lot of time left, but. Logging in. Come on. Mm. Don't know. Yes. Can you, uh, what am I doing wrong here? Control X, Control F. Okay. Uh, what? Why does it think super is pressed all the time? It must be the VM. Okay. Jeez, man. Thank you. Dot config. Uh-uh. Okay, it's not here. Let's uh, examine the store folder a little bit. GNU store. Um, oof. Yeah, dear Ed. Dear Ed. Yeah. How long is that going to take? It says, how much CPU RAM is available in that VM? Uh, not enough. Okay, so I am looking for um, init. Hello. Init.el. Okay, there is an init.el. It's empty. Shouldn't be. Unless it didn't get saved. <laughs> yes, the font is too small in this screen, that's for sure. Let me see about vm init.el, local file init.el. That's saved. So I don't know why it would be empty. Init.el lock. There's more than one. Who knows which one it is? That's probably coming from my other uh, Geek's Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's replicating the GNU store folder from uh, my local machine. And these init.el files are from me screwing around with uh, Geek's Home. So that doesn't tell me much. Is Emacs Doom theme? Well, actually, let's. here's another thing we can do. Let's check dot geeks yeah no geeks home in the user folder okay whoop, whoop, whoop. yeah no geeks home so somehow the geeks home service did not start for the user i don't know if i did something wrong andrew tell me um when i use this service Geeks home service type for the guest user. I'm passing the uh, the home environment configuration. Uh, I saw the who am I? Okay, yeah, definitely I'm guest. I think it, I think we see right there guest. Let me go to eShell. Who am I? Guest. So geeks home service type is bound to guest and uh, user home config. 
I did see, let me get back in here. Well, no, maybe, let me, let's do this here. Cause I think this is the same store, uh, GNU store, uh, geeks home guest. Dot SCM. Find home in the store and try to call activate from shell. Find dash home in the store. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to find mine though. Ah, stop. Um, dash.